Hi everybody, uh, this is the first video in a series of videos dealing with the Ottawa Blocks assembly and just putting this car together and so we've done a few assemblies in the past um, like the puzzle cubes for instance we put our puzzle cubes together using the flush and mate constraints just as a reminder uh, your might and by the way your menu might look a little bit different I'm using the 2014 version of Inventor but it's still the same concept uh, remember the mate is whenever I take two faces and I push them together squeeze them together so they can't move apart and flush is where I take two surfaces and line them up right I make them flush with each other so we're going to rely a lot on that in this autumn blocks assembly I'll have some later videos dealing with angle constraints which are in this menu and insert constraints which are great for anything circular like say for instance your axles wheels and tires okay but in this video we're going to concentrate on the flush and mate and so I, I notice my students whenever they're working on this um, they just really struggle with like this one block at socket and, and it shouldn't be that hard to um, it shouldn't be that hard to put these two things together okay but it is for some reason and I think a lot of it probably has to do with the fact that there's actually a lip if you see right there's a lip on the front of this green surface and that kind of throws things off a little bit and then there's a lot of things like you're trying to to like make this thing right you're trying to make this surface back here to like this surface over here and it's just things go crazy in a hurry so let me show you an easy way to do this okay you'll notice over here I've kind of expanded parts but but basically in these drop down menus whenever you see each of these parts let's go back to what it looks like at the beginning you'll see something like this and I have my one my passenger section my one block socket within each of these if I expand the menu there's an origin folder let's go a step farther and expand the origin folder and what you'll notice is is the planes that were used when you first built these and the reason these are awesome is because like in this case see this plane I can right click and I can make it visible and now I have a plane that cuts the thing right in half I also have well that's not going to do me much good but look at this one up and down right okay it cuts it in half going vertically and so if I look at it from this side here I notice I have some crosshairs right in the middle of that section that I want to use, right? Right in the middle of that cutout. And if I come over here and I look at the origin for the one block socket, look, I got the same thing, right? Sometimes it works out that way, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you have to go create your own work planes that cut through these pieces, okay? That's very easy to do, by the way. Let me just, I know I'm getting off on a little bit of a tangent, but let me show you how to create a new work plane, okay? If I wanted to create a work plane on this part, let's say that I just didn't have what I wanted, okay? I go and I double click the part it grays out everything else see that's gray okay they're all grayed out over here as well so I'm working actually in the IPT file at this point in time I'm not in the assembly I'm in an IPT and I can go through and I can do things like add a work plane say mid plane between two parallel planes and let's say I want to do it halfway between this one and this one here right so I just created a new work plane that cut this thing this rectangular half cut out in half right something that didn't exist before in fact I'm gonna go ahead and save that because we're gonna use that for the windshield later on that's a huge hint okay so when I'm done I right click and I finish the edit now I'm back in the assembly file right so now the whole point of this the whole point of doing this work plane thing is because now when I go to constrain instead of trying to constrain the pieces to each other I'm gonna constrain the work planes okay and so sorry my zoom is the opposite of what my school computer does here um, notice that the right the arrow points to the right here okay which is important because when I go hover over this thing see how it also points to the right okay sometimes you'll put these two work planes together and it'll turn your pieces around it'll be backwards from what you want them. so I want you to just watch this ready I'm on mate right now if I click the flush well it doesn't do anything right now you can't see it right now you will we'll see it later on okay we'll go ahead and click apply um, actually it's, it's gonna be a flush because both the arrows are pointing to the right and that's the situation that I have here right I'm gonna click apply Okay, let me get out of this for just a second and show you what's going on, right? It looks like it's moving all over the place, but just understand that whenever I go to a front view, I can see that actually those, those two work planes are lined up. I can't move it left or right anymore, right? So it's an optical illusion. Let's come back here, okay? Let's do the same thing. Let's constrain now the up and down planes, right? So let's come over here. There, this one's pointing up. This one is pointing, come on, grab it there we go that one's also pointing up that means this is going to be a flush constraint now look what happened okay right now I'm on mate you gonna let me move these things there we go okay right now it's on mate and it turned around backwards and that's really frustrating but if I come over here and I click on flush oh okay look it was fine right okay so what happened it was upside down and that caused my arrows look at my arrows are opposite directions down and up I really wanted to be up and up because that's the way it was when I chose them so click apply 
Now all I have to do is get this thing to be inserted into it the correct amount, right? The correct depth. Right now it can move in and out. And the easiest way to do that, I don't need a work plane for that. Let's just do a flush and let's get the front two faces right here and right here. Let's do that a little bit right there. Those two faces need to be flush. Get out. Let's go back to our home view. Voila, it's done, right? And what I would suggest to you, so that's using work planes to make constraints. That thing is locked completely in place. That's awesome. I'm done with that part. It only took three or four clicks, which is um, significantly less than what many of my students would take the first time they would do it. And it's really going to be helpful when you get to more complicated parts. In fact, I'll tell you right now, the connector pieces, the one that's going to go into this socket and connect to the two block socket on the other side, those things you're almost going to have to use work planes in order to constrain. Okay. Now before I quit this video, I know it's getting a little long, but I want you to understand the same thing exists here. So now that I created that work plane earlier, remember the one that went halfway between? Okay. If I come over here, I don't have the option to do the mid plane between two parallel planes. But if I come over here and I double click on the section, everything else is grayed out, right? I'm in the IPT, I have different options for work planes. So now I can go choose this one and I can say halfway between this face and its counterpart on the other side, this face, and that puts crosshairs down the middle, and guess what? Now the passenger section, I line up with that. Okay, right click, finish edit. And furthermore, on this windshield piece, I just double clicked on it, so now I'm working in the part file with it, right? You're gonna have to do the same thing with this rectangular cutout right here, okay? I'm needed to go work plane, mid plane between two parallel planes, and let's get it between, I need an angle view, hold on a second. The computer's really slow right now, holy moly. Between this guy and its counterpart right there. And that puts one right down the middle, right? Again, I'm gonna create crosshairs in the bottom of the little rectangle right here so I can line things up and make the constraint of the uh, windshield very, very simple. So. Hopefully that helps, guys. You guys really need to, to work on this, okay? And uh, if you have any questions, just ask your neighbor, man. Somebody's going to figure this out. You know, somebody in your class can figure it out. So help each other out, help get through this. Um, and then the next video that I'm going to have is going to be on how to work with those axles and wheels and tires to get them to constrain.